Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Jake Gordon and Alex Sword. I'm finally back in Atlanta. It took like four, it took like four days. I mean, literally back to back canceled flights. I guess there were tornadoes there. It was like bright and sunny in Tampa. And like I'm going to my flight and, and they're just like, Yeah, it's canceled. I'm like, for what? And then I texted you guys. I'm like, Yeah, I guess it's like storming. Even when we came in, like we had to go around a storm. So like there were still storms like coming down towards Florida and it was it was a bumpy ride. But we made it back. I'm glad to be back. Thank you guys for joining us on this Wednesday. We got a ton of good topics to talk about. We're going to start off with the Braves. Huge win last night. We can talk about Kevin Pillar. I got to give a shout out to Orlando Arcia. The guy just doesn't stop hitting. I mean, this guy's the starting shortstop of the Braves for the foreseeable future as a homer and the game winning double. Uh, Pillar comes in. Ronald Acuna. I think we avoid a disaster. There's a lot to talk about. I want to start off with Yanni Chirinos, though. This guy, I just, I'd never understood. I said it when we signed him. I never understood why we signed him. Like I get that he had a four ERA for the Rays, but you went and look at his peripherals. It looks like, I think someone said on Twitter and I put it in the article, go check it out, sportstalkatl.com. Uh, it, his, it looks like a Duke UNC game. Like, like it, it's just all blue, like dark blue and light blue. And it, it's one of the worst uh, baseball savant pages. I've, and the Braves who are so analytically based, uh, usually go for the opposite, a guy who's struggling but has those good peripherals. I don't know why they signed Chirinos because they have guys like Soroka and A.J. smith Shaver and even a guy like Darius Vines who's coming back from injury. Uh, Alan Winnens, we saw he was decent. I'd rather see anybody pitch than Yanni Chirinos jog back on the mound for the Atlanta Braves again. I think he's going to get DFA'd, but we do have a doubleheader coming up, so they might just bite the bullet. I don't need to see him get battered <laughs> like – Throw Colin McHugh for three innings. I don't care what they do. I like it. This this move made no sense. And now that you've seen him after three starts, it makes even less sense. Let's cut the ties. Let's end the joke. He's gonna get a ring when the Braves win. Congrats. That's <laughs> enough. Get him off the team. Come on. Like, what are we doing here? I definitely don't dislike him as much as you do. Um, I don't know. He definitely isn't great. Like, I'm not gonna argue with you on that, but uh, you know, it, I I can't remember which start it was. It was the second start he made. I think it was the Angels. Like, if he can give you if he can give you the five innings of three runs, I can live with that. But the problem is that's only happened once out of three times. The he's is the turning Braves into have five guys that can do that. Like, <laughs> well, the thing is, guy. the thing is, um, he's kind of turning into uh, Tommy Malone, and he's nowhere near as bad as Tommy Malone. But Tommy Malone, in the sense that, like, he'll go out there and just have a disaster. But the Braves are three and zero. It starts um, four and zero. So, four and zero now. Yeah, four and zero. No, he's only made three, three starts. Okay. Anyways, you get the point. But. Um, yeah, I, I completely understand why you want to go in a different direction. I don't hate the guy that much. I think he's also, like, he's there to just try to eat innings. I guess he's not doing a great job of it so far. I think if you wanted to really get somebody off waivers, you know, I'd just look for somebody that can that can give you six or seven. He's clearly never going to go past five innings with this team. But I don't know. Yeah, like you said, with a doubleheader, he might get one more start. Yeah, uh, I think it's very obvious they sent Soroka down with some stuff to work on because that's what it was. They picked him up off waivers, Yanni, and then they sent Soroka down. Obvious, it has to be that because you're right. AJ Smith, Robert, the Braves have like four guys down in AAA right now that can give them this the exact same thing and probably better in some cases. So I think he's just a play. He's definitely just a placeholder. He'll he he'll probably get one more start. Uh, in the rotation and it's because of that double header and then he'll be gone and like you said he'll, he'll get a world series ring and he'll be happy about it yeah i just like my whole thing is uh, like soroka yeah he hasn't looked great i mean aj smith shavers had you know some shaky shaky starts shaky moments especially with the c control and you can say the same thing about soroka but even in his last since soroka the four the four he did three starts four appearances 4.12 era the braves won all those games except for the one that he came in relief like I like you're getting better production out of Michael. So I just don't understand what the Braves are doing with Michael Soroka, especially after everything they've said, like we don't want to yo-yo him around and he needs to work on some stuff. And I just don't think Soroka, and we've talked about a million times is a guy who needs to go down to AAA to build his confidence or like it, we can work on his stuff. We have a 10 and a half game lead in the division. He can work on his stuff up here. Like what is he going to learn down there that he can't learn at the major league level? Uh, the only reason it would make any sense to me is if you're trying to limit in innings and stuff, but no, he's still going out there and pitching for Gwinnett and, and pitching five, six innings, whatever. So they're not limiting his innings. I just, it made no sense to me. Like just let Soroka go out there. And like, if you, maybe they just wanted to sign him in case Soroka got blown up three for three starts. And then you'd be like in a weird place where you don't have this guy, but Hey, listen, he can go back to the Rays. 
Shane McClanahan's out for the season. He's got a spot in Tampa Bay. Send him back. I mean, like, that, like swap him back. I, I don't know if this is still the case. I don't know if this was before the most recent time he was called back up, but I think if Soroka stays in Gwinnett for the until like September 25th or something like that, he does get another year of control. So that's something that might be playing into this. Um, and at this point, like maybe they think it's worth waiting. I could kind of see the merits of that argument, but I don't know. I, it's just a consideration at least. I have a hard I, time. I have a hard have time, a hard time manipulating that. Soroka's control. Yeah. Hell, I don't I'm just saying. I'm I know just you're saying. just bringing. It, I agree. I know you're just bringing it up because it is worth. It, it's no. It's noteworthy. Though I have a hard time believing the Braves are. That's things that like fringe competitive teams do, not teams that like are on the cusp of you know winning a World Series and a wide open window. You know, that's just not something the Braves have ever shown a willingness to do. Um, in fact, it's like the opposite almost. I feel like they care even like negatively. They care about that. Like that's not even a consideration. Who knows? Obviously none of us are in the building. I just have a hard time believing that, but it is noteworthy. I mean, it, it would be hilarious if he stayed down there and then, you know, in the final week of the season before the postseason comes up and gets a start. I, mean, I just would... don't even know if they're going to pick up Mike, Mike, and I, the Braves fans aren't going to be happy to hear. It. I don't even know if they'll pick up Soroka's arbitration this year. Like to yeah, be that honest, was kind of what I that's kind of what I was thinking anyways, like when I was saying that, but it's like I like I don't even know even if he like I don't even know like because it's probably gonna be like three million or something like that. I don't even know if they pick that up and, and pay him three million dollars next year. Uh I mean I think they probably would. They've hung on this long and it's three million bucks, and he's a starting pitcher. If he can ever figure it out, it but, would be pretty crazy for them to continue to hang on this long and then in the very first season back to expect him to reach, you know, reach even close to where he was. I mean, they have to give him at least one more year. At least. It's crazy. I mean, I think I think they I think they will. I'm just I saying think they absolutely I think I think they if it's three million, they will. Like and when we're talking about control and stuff like that in time, like I don't even know if he has one it maybe he only has one more year left on this team. Like we don't even know like realistically what Soroka has left, how long he has left on this team. I don't think they're manipulating service time with a guy who might not even be here in two years. Cause if he does this again next year, he's not going to be on the team. There's no way. So uh, it's just the Yanni and Chirinos thing. It, it frustrates me because I really do think, and obviously the Braves, I, I don't know, I guess they don't think this, but I really think like it might be the slimmest, slimmest of possibilities that one of Soroka or AJ Smith Shaver could actually be on the postseason roster and have an impact if they if they show some confidence and build some stuff up. I can guarantee you without a shred of doubt, it doesn't matter what Chirinos does, he's not going to be on the postseason roster. He could go out there and throw nine innings tomorrow. It's not going to change my mind. AJ Smith Shaver's stuff is elite, but like he hasn't shown an ability. I think he's still a year away from being a regular contributor. And Soroka has shown nothing to show that he even has a sliver of a chance to get on the postseason the roster. Hurston Walter, opinion. baby. <laughs> He's the you know, I mean, but, but he probably put, has a better shot. Put, but if you put both of those two, and I said combined, 5% chance. Like, I don't think that's ridiculous to say. 5% chance. I'm not saying it's a big chance, but it's more of a chance than Yanni Chirinos. It's more of a chance than Yanni Chirinos, and that's it's my point. It's not much. It's not yeah, much. I don't think it's much, but but there there, there is – uh, possibly I don't know anyways like you know I like the Stephen A. Smith thing when when something comes around he's a bona fide scrub man the guy just can't play I don't need to see him jog out there any longer coming up after the break the Falcons cornerback room getting a little thin Clark Phillips injury we got good news we're going to talk about it after the break <laughs> 